ask you a couple questions here. We've got one from Doug who wants to know how you're going to get past the stigma of disinformation. Um, I guess I would add to that, you know, obviously a lot of people hear you and they think this is some sort of, you know, cockamamie or, or trend-oriented kind of idea. Where's the proof here? Where's the proof that this stuff is real? That's exactly right. Well, right now what we've done is put together the testimony and government documents, uh, and people can see that at our website, the disclosureproject.org. And uh, we have everyone ranging from brigadier generals to colonels to cosmonauts to what have you who have now come forward on the record that, in fact, these projects and these sorts of events have occurred. Now, we're not going to come forward as a company, the Space Energy Access Systems, until we have a robust, uh, prototype that has been tested at at least three independent universities and laboratories and that prove the physics. And once we have that actually built and assembled, we will then disclose it publicly in, in a very large fashion. But uh, right now, of course, uh, that is this is a startup effort to go from uh, the intelligence that we've gathered to actually identifying and building these systems, and we plan to be doing that over the next few months. All right. Question from W. Mays. You've been asking for open congressional hearings on UFOs and related technologies. How close are you to getting Congress to hold these hearings? You know, you'd have to ask the members of Congress that. I would say that from my, my measure of this is that there are a number of members of the Senate and House with whom we've met recently who are tremendously interested in this. They're afraid of going forward because of the ridicule and, as you said, the disinformation factor. But I think that uh, the public is going to have to really get behind wanting this information out, particularly as it, as it applies to uh, the environment and the energy situation and the uh, war on terrorism and the oil problem. Uh, before you're going to see actual open hearings on it. At this point, we've, we're, we're continuing to do private briefings for congressional staffers as well as members of Congress, and we're finding that there's a tremendous amount of interest. And by the way, no one is laughing at this. You know, it's get ridiculed a lot in the media, but, you know, my meeting with the CIA director was almost three hours long, and, and he was gravely concerned about this. And I can say people at the United Nations and, and in ambassador roles around the world have had a similar reaction to it. So it is being taken seriously. How close we are to actually getting an open hearing on this, it's very hard to say. I think the public is going to have to get behind this uh, in a larger way before that happens. And by the way, on that note, we do have from our website, <coughs> disclosureproject.org, um, an automated fax system so that you can write your member of Congress or your two senators and the president at, at our cost and not at your cost and fax in a letter expressing your interest that this matter be properly investigated. Mm -hmm. Let me, I, I looked at your website uh, pretty extensively. It's got some interesting information on it. I know that at your press conference last May at the National Press Club, you had several uh, members or ex-members of the government, of the military, uh, former astronauts, et cetera, testifying that they had actually seen uh, unidentified flying objects, et cetera. Can you very briefly and in layman's terms explain what the majority of these people saw? Did they mostly see a similar thing? Try to prove it to our viewers that this stuff actually exists. Well, for example, uh, John Callahan, who is the fourth highest ranking FAA official during the Reagan years, personally investigated uh, in his capacity as the person who was in charge of accidents and investigations for the FAA, a 31-minute digital radar tracking of a, of a large UFO the size of four 747s moving nonlinearly at enormous speeds over the airspace of Alaska that was uh, seen and on the radar of a Japan Airlines 747 as well as on military radar and uh, military fighters. This uh, tape and the videotape of this tracking we now have in our possession. We have the transcripts of the pilots and of the air traffic controllers. Uh, we have the senior official who uh, said that this event was fully investigated and proven to be real and that the CIA came in and said, quote, this event never happened, we were never here, and you were never here. We don't now, that's the kind, we have like over 150 uh, people like this who are already on the record about these kinds of events, and so there's not only the scientific data, but there's the eyewitness testimony and the corroborating government documents. Now, I mean, short of hauling one of these things out into the parking lot, that's about as good as it gets. So that is what we have, and we have it redundant uh, and corroborated by dozens of similar witnesses. Mm -hmm. Well, Dr. Gore, one of the most interesting things that I uh, read in some of these notes was that apparently, um, according to one person or several people, the government potentially has reverse engineered a crashed UFO and sort of gleaned some information about the technology there. Is that correct? Yes, beginning in the 30s and 40s, actually, there was a very classified project to study these objects. Um, and 
we have had some very significant scientific breakthroughs. Now, many of those, of course, have been classified and, and have remained to this day, particularly those that deal with uh, propulsion and energy systems. But uh, these, these have happened. Many people think this is the stuff of science fiction and mythology. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, we have the first-hand witnesses to these projects who are now coming forward. And uh, they are respected military officials and co corporate contractors whose the government bona fides and documents uh, have established uh, that, that, in fact, this is going on. Uh, it's very hard for most people to accept that this could be true and that it could be kept secret because they think our government leaks secrets like a sieve. And I would say they do in the conventional government that, uh, that we elect, but this sort of permanent bureaucracy or shadow government that you see out there is extremely adept at keeping these things, things secret, and I will say have used the very ruthless techniques to do so. Uh, but in fact, this is true. It is not just science fiction. Okay. Let me let me also bring up another uh, fact that I read in Wire, a Wired news article that covered your press conference last year in D.C. Essentially, some people were saying that even Northrop Grumman, other aero defense uh, companies, private companies and public companies, Lockheed Martin, among others, are actually complicit in this, uh, I guess one could say, conspiracy. Now, that seems pretty unbelievable to me. How do you prove that? Well, we actually have people who have worked with or, or have family who have been with Lockheed Martin and have been with some of these contractors and, quote, compartmented black operations uh, at Skunk Works and elsewhere that have dealt with these technologies. So uh, what we would say to people, it may sound astonishing, but get us a congressional hearing and you'll see uh, several dozen of these people testifying under oath that this is the case. Uh, we have one uh, witness that I've spoken with who actually saw one of these uh, things that look like a UFO. It's a disc-shaped anti-gravity vehicle that we have been building with a consortium of companies that include uh, uh, SAIC, Lockheed Martin, Northrop, and others. And uh, this gentleman, who is, uh, has many patents to his name and is a very substantial inventor and scientist, uh, personally saw these finished products uh, in a hangar uh, back in the 80s at Norton Air Force Base, which is a facility now that's been decommissioned. The point being that, uh, indeed, we do have these kinds of witnesses, and there has been a, a multi-billion dollar project studying these things for several decades. I will also point out to your listeners that James Defense Weekly, which is one of the most prestigious defense journals, has also established uh, that there have been very classified projects since the 40s and 50s studying so-called electrogravitic or anti-gravity propulsion systems, uh, and that these have certainly by now been largely perfected into operational vehicles. I, I will tell you that many of the things that people think they see that are, they, they think they're from outer space, are actually being manufactured uh, uh, in the United States and elsewhere by these sort of projects. Okay, that sounds 